Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Gaston Bertels, past chairman, Aris Europe. And I thank you for giving me the opportunity to tell you about Aris, its, its goals, and how it performs its duties. Aris is the acronym of Amateur Radio on International Space Station. ARIS is an international working group of the National Amateur Radio Societies of the countries participating to the ISS. ARIS' goal is educational outreach, allowing students to talk with astronauts on board the International Space Station by way of amateur radio. ARIS collaborates with the different space organizations. We have NASA, the American Space Agency. We have ESA, the European Space Agency. Roscosmos, the Russian Space Agency. JAXA, the Japanese Space Agency and CSA, the Canadian Space Agency. In collaboration with the space agencies, ARIS sets up educational conversations where students can put questions to astronauts on board the International Space Station and get their answers direct from space. The amateur radio service has a long tradition with space exploration. Remember, the space age began 4 October 1957 with Sputnik and only four years later, 10 December 1960, now 55 years ago, the first Amateur radio built small satellite was launched by a rocket of the United States Air Force. This small satellite was called OSCAR, orbiting satellite carrying amateur radio. And it was the first of a long generation, a long series of OSCARs and other amateur satellites that orbit the Earth. OSCARs was sending out a greeting to the world and to the amateur radio world, uh, the American way to greet people, uh, hi, the letters H and I, in telegraphy, which is digididit didit. Now I have the recording of that original signal from space, the first ever for amateurs radio, and here is this recording. So this is a historical recording, the ever first signals from space as transmitted now 55 years ago from Oscar 1. And Oscar 1 had many many successors. Many many Oscars and other satellites, amateur radio satellites were built over the years. And when space, uh, inhabited space exploration began with Mir, amateur radio was on board Mir from the beginning. And after that also on the shuttles, the American shuttles. And now on the International Space Station. In collaboration with the space agencies, ARIS performs educational outreach, setting up a radio station in a participating school, allowing students to talk with astronauts. Now that is not technically so simple because the ISS comes over 
in the sky of a location in about 10 minutes, rising over the horizon, getting to the highest point of pass and then going down over the other side of the horizon. All that in some 8, 9 or 10 minutes, depending on the orbit. To establish radio contact with the ISS, the ground station needs tracking antennas pointing to the ISS during its trajectory through the sky. And as the ISS can come from any direction depending on the orbit, the antennas shall be able to point to the horizon 300 over 360 degrees, which is not easy at all, certainly not in a city. Therefore, Ares has a dozen of dedicated ground stations, very well equipped, with good antennas and accurate tracking. These ground stations are located in different countries, for example, there are three in the United States, one on the West Coast in California, one in Texas at Houston, and one near Washington DC. There are also two in South America, in Argentina. There are two in Europe, one in Belgium and the other in Italy. We have one in the middle of the Pacific, in Honolulu. We have also three in Australia, on the west coast, on the south coast and on the east of the Australian continent. So, we cover all the world. The ISS travels in an orbital plane that has an inclination of 51 degrees versus the equator. So the ISS can come over cities like uh, Antwerp and Colo, but not over the North or the South Pole, and not also neither over cities high up over uh, in, uh, in Sweden, for example, or in Finland. Therefore, the telebridge stations are very useful. For a telebridge contact, it's one of the dedicated telebridge stations that does the radio contact and from there, the signals to and from the ISS travel over telephone line to the school. The ISS travels at a speed of 28,000 kilometers per hour which is 7.8 kilometers per second. With that speed, the orbit of the ISS takes 90 minutes around the Earth. So every 90 minutes, the ISS can come over Europe, but not over the same part of Europe. Because during 90 minutes, the Earth has traveled to the east, so that the next pass of the ISS is more to the west. And this is interesting. I remember, for example, one case of uh, a, uh, an Irish school contact where the ground station called and called and there was no answer from the ISS. I was on the spot and I called Houston on the phone. And Houston called the astronaut who was in charge of the radio contact. And the astronaut was busy with a very important experiment and that's the reason why he couldn't do the Irish contact. But happily enough, the next orbit, 90 minutes later, was still in reach of the ground station. And so, on the next orbit, 90 minutes later, the Irish radio contact could effectively be done. And all was safe. Even if Ares is an experimental service, we enjoy nearly 99% of success. And this is due to performing ground stations, of course, but also to a very efficient organization. The Irish Organization Committee meets weekly per teleconference. 
and mentors exchange their experiences and prepare the upcoming school contacts. So the preparation for a school contact takes at least two or three months. This all is done by a small group of volunteers that get in touch with local amateur radio operators to prepare a radio station for the participating school or other equipment for a telebridge contact. A recent development is the installation on board the ISS of a television transmitter, a digital television transmitter called Ham Video. That transmitter is presently in test mode and in the near future we hope that schools doing an RA school contact can not only talk with astronauts but also see them during the contact. To receive the television signals from ham video the ground stations need parabolic antennas and a very accurate tracking system and even with excellent conditions the reception is limited to maximum five or six minutes per ground station therefore we are setting up a chain of ground stations where during a pass of the ISS one station can receive for five minutes and then the next for five minutes and so on till the pass is over we have therefore ham video ground stations in Ireland in France, in Italy, and also in uh, Portugal and in Poland, in Colo. And with this chain of stations, we hope to do soon very efficient and interesting school contacts enhanced with digital television. That does not mean that in the future all our school contacts will be ham tv school contacts indeed the crew time needed for a ham tv school contact is more than the double of that needed for an audio contact indeed the astronaut has to set up the camera which is battery powered and also he has to make uh, preparations for recording the contact because NASA rule is that all pictures taken inside the ISS for outreach shall be recorded and downloaded. So this all takes a lot of crew time and therefore since crew time is very very costly the Ari school contacts enhanced with ham video will be limited in number of course. Another development presently underway is a slideshow. We are preparing a slideshow allowing the HEM video transmitter to produce continuously a series of images with an educational content and the HEM video system will be turned on as for long periods transmitting this slideshow. One interesting question is how can ham video be received in schools? Are we going to set up specialized television stations in schools? That would not be very easy and even impossible. Therefore the chained ground stations will receive the signals from the ISS and stream the decoded video over internet to a dedicated server to which the school can connect and receive the images from space. Ladies and gentlemen, it was my pleasure to present to you the goals and the achievements 
of the Aries organization. I thank you for your attention.